But some cars only have two doors and have four wheels. Motorcycles have no doors and have two wheels. That seems like there are more wheels. Well, that depends, Ari. Are we talking about only human-made things? Or are we talking about stuff like cell membranes? Because if those have door, you can consider... Oh, <laughs> sorry, dear viewer. Ari and I were just arguing about whether or not there are more doors or wheels on the planet. I know it kind of sounds like a silly question, but it's actually quite interesting the more that you think about it. In fact, when you asked me live on stream, it almost broke my brain. And so today, I decided to come up with the definitive answer. Where would we even begin? What makes a door a door, a wheel a wheel? How could you count these gigantic numbers? Why am I concerning an entire episode with a semi-viral tweet from 2021? Well, I'll tell you. It's because I think you becoming a better estimator will lead to you becoming a better thinker. So, let's get started. A question like whether or not there are more doors or wheels in the world is inherently interesting, because while it's practically impossible to answer it exactly, it's entirely possible to estimate it and to come so close that it doesn't matter. We therefore have a perfect example of a so-called Fermi estimation, named after famed scientist Enrico Fermi, who was so darn good at making accurate estimates of impossible calculations that they named the process after him. He once accurately estimated the blast pressure from a nuclear test just by dropping pieces of paper in the wind and observing how they moved. Yeah, he was a real gigachad. There is no official way to Fermi estimate, but as we said in a previous episode of this program, what you generally want to do is find big picture relationships, relate those relationships to each other, and then come within maybe an order of magnitude or a factor of 10 of the true answer. A lot of the time, that's good enough. So let's try an example. How many dogs are currently in the United States as pets? This is something that I did not look up before filming this episode, so we're gonna try it together. Big picture relationships. I know that there are 330 million people in the United States. I'm going to now estimate that one out of every three people have a pet. And let's give some deference to cats here. One out of every two pets of those people will be dogs. Now, if I take 330 million divided by six, I will get an estimate for the number of dogs in the United States as pets as 55 million. Now, like I said, I did not look this up beforehand, so what I will do now is look up how many, how many dogs in the United States, and I get 90 million. 90 million dogs, so we're off by less than a factor of two. This is the power of the Fermi estimation. Yes, it's not right on the money, but it's close enough to make an educated decision about. Now, we want to try to do the same thing with doors and wheels. Put your answer in the comments below, and be sure to like the video now. Aria, are you doing a CTA in here? Nice. We begin with as big a picture as we can think of. We will define a door as any hinged, sliding, or rotating opening to some room, vehicle, or container. And we will define a wheel as a circular frame capable of freely rotating about an axis. With these definitions in mind, what are the dominating examples of doors and wheels? Well, a good first approximation would be the number of houses and cars in the world. Surely we can be pretty confident that there are billions of both, but that doesn't really make one a better estimation than the other, one win out, does it? So if we refine these numbers a little bit, we can think of um, how many wheels each car has, but then each, many cars had the same number of doors as wheels, which cancels out that advantage, but houses have many cabinets that you could consider doors or even toilet seats, but then, you know, Cars also have steering wheels and spare t Look, there seems like there's a lot of variables here that aren't getting us outside of that order of magnitude estimation that we want. So I think we have to get nerdier. Watch where you're flying that thing, Kevin. Dang, you fly about as well as Dr. Oz doctors, which is to say, not good. Widening our search for doors and wheels, many of you will point out to me that Lego produces a lot of wheels, specifically 300 million or more each year, meaning billions in the world today. 
Similarly, Hot Wheels to date since the 60s has produced around 6 billion little toy cars that you can slip on as a parent, meaning that there's tens of billions of tiny Hot Wheels wheels in the world, surely putting the wheels ahead of doors in this debate. But wait, what about all the non-house things we're not thinking of? What about all the hotels in the world with hundreds of thousands of doors each? What if all the stores and all the storefronts and the cabinets and the, and what I'm trying to get at here is that there's so many variables within the same orders of magnitude that I don't yet see a clear winner. It's tens of billions versus tens of billions maybe. So is there something that we're forgetting? All the elevators in the world? All the mechanical watches and the dozens of gears inside each mechanical what? Hmm. I feel like we're forgetting something, but I have to think about it for a second. What do you think? Today's video is sponsored by BetterHelp. Having trouble finding purpose and meaning? Do you feel ready to reach out to someone, but you're nervous about acknowledging your mental health because that will make it real? It's time to get BetterHelp. BetterHelp is professional counseling done securely with a licensed professional therapist online. After the service assesses your needs, get matched for weekly phone or video sessions with your expert therapist. Log into your account anytime to send the messages and change your counselor at any time for free. Don't sit in a waiting room. Don't get stuck with the only therapist in your area. Don't pay any more than you have to because you have access to financial aid. If you wanna start achieving your brain goals, if you wanna start living a happier life, Try going to betterhelp.com slash Kyle Hill to get 10% off your first month. Look, I have not one, but two people in my life who I love very much who use BetterHelp every week. I cannot say it's for everyone, but it might be for you. It's time to start acknowledging that mental health is health. Make it better with BetterHelp. Wheels are inarguably one of the most important inventions in human history, right up there with fire. Wheels are so useful for humanity, in fact, that it's not silly to ask the question, why didn't any animals ever evolve wheels? Why didn't any animal get some freely rotating appendage about an axis so that they can harness the power of the wheel? Well, the leading explanation evolutionarily is that it's simply too biologically expensive to radically change your entire body plan for something that doesn't have incremental advantages. Now, when I say that, I mean, Think about a bird's wing. Even a half of a bird's wing, even a quarter, even a twentieth of a bird's wing could still be used for natural selection. It could be used to dissipate heat or for mating displays or even just simple gliding, not even flying. A wheel doesn't have the same incremental advantage. If any animal actually did have wheels, it would probably tilt our discussion towards wheels, no question. But Maybe we're focusing too much on animals like us and what we have or what we don't have or what we innovated or we didn't. I think there are wheels that we're forgetting, but we have to think a lot smaller, a lot smaller. At this point in the video, I'm sure you're yelling something at your screen, some door or wheel that I forgot. But like that Twitch streamer you sent for, I feel like I can just ignore you. Why? Because of this. This is a flagellum, a locomotive appendage found on many non-animal organisms. Now, there are many different kinds of these organisms and many different kinds of flagella, but what I want to show you today is this. That's right. Powered by electrical forces generated by charge differentials in cell membranes, these are the only known examples of true biological wheels as we define them. Look at this, they're pretty good wheels too. Some bacteria's flagella allow them to move up to 60 body lengths per second in a corkscrewing spinning fashion. If you scaled this up to your size, that's like you running at over 100 miles per hour. Now, why I'm bringing up flagella, these tiny biological wheels, is that it's estimated that over half of all bacteria have flagella, which means, in terms of doors versus wheels, it's not even close. If half of all bacteria have flagella, then there are at least 
1,000 billion, billion, billion biological wheels on Earth, literally making wheel-driven movement the most common form of movement on the planet, more common than crawling, walking, slithering, anything. This unimaginable number is more than all of the bugs on Earth, more than all of the grains of sand on all of the beaches, more than all of the stars in the observable universe, and more than all the atoms in your body. If we were worried about billions of wheels versus billions of doors before, then this answers the question definitively. As happens so often, nature has beat humanity to the design punch and innovated wheels billions of years before any primate did. Even if you imagine all of the houses, all of the hotels, all of the stores, all the toilet seats, and I can imagine quite a few toilet seats, the number of doors in the world isn't even in the same universe as the number of wheels. Our Fermi estimate isn't as exact as our first example that we did today, but we can be confident in saying that wheels outnumber doors on Earth by at least a few quintillion. Wheels is the answer to our question. Aria, you hear that? I figured it out. That's nice. Can you please pick up Kevin from school now? Right, important stuff. Until next time. They snipe me. What am I supposed to do? Not answer? Now exiting the facility. Thank you so much to the very nerdy staff at the facility for their direct and substantial support in the creation of this here video. If you want to join the facility, if you want to watch videos early, if you want to talk with me on our official Discord, if you want to learn how to get volume like this and see private members only live streams of me, not like that. You can go to patreon.com slash Kyle Hill and join the facility today. Put on a lab coat, feel great, like these hundreds and hundreds of people who support us just enough to get their name on Aria in every single video. <laughs> How am I gonna pass the time with all these people? So there is kind of another loophole here, kind of like I did with flagella. If you consider the openings in cell membranes to be doors, then they would outnumber wheels. If we're looking at everything we could possibly look at, but as we define them, these tiny molecular openings are more like channels in cell membranes and less like doors. So I think wheel still wins, but if we're only talking about human-made stuff, Thanks for watching.